This recording is inspired by an um, incident that recently happened with two artists that are in my group, in the Christic Artist Group, and also involves uh, several other people that were sharing their artwork without permission, without asking. One of the artists found wasn't specifically her artwork, but in a way, yeah, you could say that it was art. It was one of the the new sun codes that's on Arrhenius. One of the, I believe, the go vertical codes. One of those. You know, she had like a grid set up on it with crystals on her wall. You know, on her profile on Facebook, and apparently, this individual went in, took the picture, reposted it without any header or context to it just kind of posted it and i actually shared the post and i assumed that it was from this individual who posted it whom i did not know well he's a newcomer well come to find out the the person who had originally who made the post she did not give any permission to it and she was actually quite offended that this person took her her post and reposted it without any header to it, original source, anything. And I guess he downloaded the picture and just reposted it. It was a very sacred grid that she had, had set up with these crystals and using this code, using a go vertical code. After that there was some other pictures that were also shared from another artist uh, without her permission, done in the same way. Just kind of downloaded and reposted without context, without credit to the original artist. It kind of inspired this this audio here. And the subject that I want to talk about on the importance of asking. Intermingled with the with these artists' artwork was also Arrhaeus codes taken out of manuals from workshops. Uh, recent well, the the workshops that are available on Arrhaeus and some codes, some Parts just taken out of the manuals, excerpts and things just completely out of context with no header, no reference of where it comes from. And I made a, a post that I'm going to read here. So this is the post that I made after um, discovering this post. It's on a public, public group, a new group that they created. I think the name of it's called the library and this is in reference to the to his post that was posted there public domain on facebook this was five days ago um, today is march 27th i am asking for people to please refrain from posting on public domain other chaos artists artwork codes and even the arrays codes that are for sale there have been complaints from these KS artists about this, and out of respect for them, we should always ask their permission to share their art. Something else to note is that Araya supplies and owns intellectual copyright ownership. Lastly, and most importantly, the Guardians have requested fair exchange for any and all of this material to be respected. I will also add, and this is something that I want to expand on, I will also add that in parentheses, in my opinion, posting out of context, quote unquote, pretty codes on public domain could possibly cause premature DNA activation in others. I want to give a little bit more context on my own personal story. I usually try to, to bring in some authenticity on things and where I'm coming from and why I, I make these recordings and how, how my viewpoints are, have been developed over the years. And I think that, get, that offers some level of authenticity in subject matters that I'm talking about. My journey into KS has been, there's been so many changes. My perspectives of how I treat others, levels of respect, levels of sovereignty, things that I did not understand before about these levels of respect that I didn't even know was there. And that involves asking, asking people first, asking permission, which was, you know, there, there's a spectrum to this and it goes in different levels of when to ask. And I've been there, I've, I've 
been there where these individuals are at and re reposting and sharing without asking. I've done that before, done that on numerous occasions in the past coming into this into this study. So I feel like I can speak to, you know, some of the evolutionary paths that are involved with this and the practice of not asking. Also just the discoveries of private versus public domain and the huge differences that are involved in those two environments. I didn't used to ask, you know, when I first came in, if I had the same attitude that this work was free, was meant for the world, and freedom teachings needs to live up to its name, being free. And there wasn't much discretion back then, even though I didn't really comprehend or fully understand the settings on Facebook with private and public. It took me a little bit to navigate that and figure that out. I think back then there was even defaults set to public, like you had to manually switch it to private. Either way, there was a lot of material that was uploaded on Facebook groups that was available on pub public domain. It's a lot of things I was posting on my wall, profile pictures, a lot of things. I lost an account way back, way early on, like in probably 2011 or something. And then even other accounts, you know, after using the original, trying to, to maintain as much of the, the original workshop authenticity of presentation, you know, the, the manual covers, which is what I was using for like the Templars. I would use the original manual cover for Dance Force series. I would use the original manual cover, Cathar 1. I was using for the Cathar teachings and got struck down with copyrights for the for using that as the cover pictures of those groups and I lost an entire another entire Facebook account for that and that was fairly recently it's a couple of years ago or so but it's been a lot of you know trial and error learning this stuff and knowing in my heart that I don't want to harm others and following that course, so that's what this is about. That I wish nobody harm in this process. And you know, way early on, I went through a lot of asking and asking permission from I think before even with Azurite Press, working with Mac on copyrights for an album I did, Echoes of the Echoes, where I was wanting to use the Cathar grid, and she's like. She was working with me on that. She's like, no, you can't use the entire Cathar grid. It's like, okay, well, can I kind of fade it out or use parts of it? And we worked together on what I could and couldn't do on the album. And just trying to be mindful and respectful, you know, of, of things and navigate my way through this of, okay, well, how much is allowed to, go, to, to be out there, you know, of this material, which um, I was on fire about. It just reaching a broader audience and getting out there. So I understand the passion behind people that are wanting to share on this broader level, and I totally get it, I understand. But there is something recently that, that stuck with me. There's been a lot of, uh, quite a few things over the years that have stuck with me, but this most recent refinery process we went through in one of the groups with Fair Exchange, the notion that the guardians have asked for fair exchange, all doing goings ons with this material. That struck something in me that really reverberated and still reverberates in what I do and how I handle the groups and how I handle sharing with others, discretion, respect, that there needs to be a level of reciprocity that is present with these teachings that are here in this material. And that's like across the board, you know. Um, if somebody's not putting what you've given them to use and just asking for more, that should be put in check, that should be looked at. If something is posted on public domain, out of context, and just uh, with your name above it, that should be put in check, that needs to be looked at. If there's entire workshops, um, uh, and, and this is something also that I have a really strong distinction of, the, what is available and what is not available. 
I have a real strong disagreement to entire KDDL workshops that are uploaded on a cloud, made available to in a in a group setting. You know, now that can be debatable also about like, well, who's screening the group, who's allowing people in. But I think in any group setting, where new material that's been presented, you got over like twenty, fifty people, maybe more. Things can get a little complex with that, and right now with so many reversals that are happening, any type of new material that I'm sharing has been utmost discretion with it. And it's on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's, it's not in any group setting, and and that's speaking in relevance of cloud storage. You know, where somebody can take it, download it, and do whatever they want with it of their own accord. That gets really, really complex, really, really quickly these days. Even with close, quote unquote, close friends or people you feel like you're on a level with, that can change rapidly these days, very quickly, on who you're connected to and a lot of uh, people making different decisions rather abruptly these days that I've witnessed. So I'm a lot more comfortable with the Facebook security settings of streams, streaming, and that is not available for download. You know, it has to be viewed within the the group and there's no link that can be shared outside the group unless you're already a member and then you can click on the link and it'll take you into that group setting but people that are not members they can click the link and it says content not available which I I really appreciate that that setting it holds up to the word private and maintains it Whereas cloud storage drives can be shared anywhere. Public domain, somebody can download it, share it with a friend, another friend, and so on. It gets a lot more complex, a lot, quick, a lot quicker. So the importance of asking, even, even with prayer, which is what really struck something in me too that resonated when I first heard that, that you, you need to ask the person that you're praying for permission to, to pray for. I mean, can you imagine if the Christian church, Catholics, all these different religions started doing that? How much less entanglement there would be energetically with people? You know, Arrow brought up a really interesting subject and in, towards the end of her our, our most recent interview about this Ubi network that we're all a part of and how we all cord each other in conversations on a daily basis. You know, there's, there's a lot of entanglement that happens that has been normalized. It's an excellent interview. I really strongly encourage people to check that out. Like, there, it was packed. There's a lot of stuff I'm still digesting from that interview. A lot of things that come up in conversation. Um, that really stuck with me, and it even with prayer, you know, even with prayer, you want to ask and make sure that you have permission, that they know who's praying for them. And if you're asking others also, let the individual know, hey, we're all going to be praying for you, type thing. That potentially reduces a lot, uh, even though you know, I was raised with a mom that always told me, the road to hell is paved with good intentions because I used to always get myself in trouble with good intentions, even growing growing up, and fairly recently too. That's that runs pretty deep in multiple subjects when you think about it. Take take some steps back and look at it. That we may have really good intentions for somebody, but if there's not a resonance level and there's not permission and there's not just the simple element of asking, then things can get really distorted really quickly really jaded and really misinterpreted and mistranslated and can lose the original context original source so that has been uh, something that's just come up more and more relevance these days for me in the groups and seeing people that just come in that um, I just the last video I made audio was on the importance of integration and that's another thing that comes with this when people are just posting kind of fly by KS bling pictures or terminology 
on post without any context, without saying this is where this came from. I can understand if it's like little, these jewels that you should drops and workshops on tangents, you know, like say for instance on the pyramids or, you know, where do we go when we sleep or on cats or, you know, these, these relevant topics of things that are really useful, really valuable information that she gives just kind of drops these little data bombs data drips here and there that's entirely different that's an entirely different subject but when it's like codes that are specifically working on a certain density level that were used in activations and journeys and things that are just kind of nonchalantly posted on walls or public groups or instagram and stuff um, without giving any source to where it came from and what it is linked to to kind of guiding people to that so they can find it and work with it. You know, Sue Clemson left me with something really important to do in this project, and that's to always put... It. She said if you're going to be uploading workshops in their entirety like this, then you need to make sure that the manual is included with all of them so people can induct those codes and get the frequency that they need that is going to assist with the understanding of the workshop. And she made sure that I understood that. And that's a really important factor is context of the entire workshop. That you have everything that was a part of that workshop available with with the entirety of the workshop. So I've always made a point to do that with every manual I have access to, to, to make sure that it's in the guide section and that people have access to that. So, I mean, some people may be asking, like, well, what, why am I not asking Arias for um, permission like to do the groups and stuff and the truth is I have I've asked multiple times I was working with um, Darlene who used to do the reservations and handle all the the hotel bookings and stuff with people at the workshops and this was right before the shield split right for all the court arrangements and stuff that took place and you know that was my kind of a go-to person and the projects and she was working with me to some extent bringing up the skypod group at the board meetings and you know she sounded confident in what was going on with it and that kind of faded out and then a lot of people that i mean the people that were members of chaos reality newcomers are aware of what happened with Mark Mark Gibbs recently, who also works who works with Arias and kind of worked with him off and on a couple times through the years, was trying to establish some level of um, you know what we could and could not do in the group. But I have kind of reached an understanding that there's not going to be a response for every single little project. That's simply because they've got their own projects that they're working on right now that are huge, massive, that involve the freedom teachings and making those available again in a safe way and in an orderly way in, in the correct sequence, which is what she recently mentioned, that the original Arrayus, or the original Azurite Press product list was not in the correct like chronological sequence of activations and that's something important to note also so i know that they're working on huge projects right now and of course we're in mid workshop you know kddl3 she's still taking line we've got all the the technicals and graphs and stuff that that's going on with that at the same time they recently presented the tangible structure of the soul as a product on the elasa freedom forum which is incredible. That's that's a really... I think that was one of the first products, if not the first product that may have been released. I may be mistaken on that. Uh, that was That's where the Rishi gives, gives you the Maharic Shield. So... And I have not purchased that workshop to see if there was anything changed on that or any correct way, like to add plasmas or what to do with that. I'm not aware of of it having any changes but I have not seen it 
And as far as I know, this has come up too, something good to address. As far as I understand, all of light body techniques, Cathara, Dance for all the techniques, activations, stuff that we did then, is going to become valid again now, coming up in the next few years, couple years, maybe sooner even. I need to check the dates, but coming up very shortly. And there's going to be given new ways working with the plasmas first into the light body, crystal body, external anatomy that's going to be presented. So it's not to say we're just going to jump back into these old activations. There's going to be like official charts and techniques and things that are going to be given to show us safely how to do that. That's my understanding of it. And I think that this last activation and technique that we just did the eight breath thing is kind of telling of that because it, she had charts showing external and internal anatomy and breathing from these different points so kind of trailing off a little bit but i wanted to make an all-in-one video here of um but mainly just the focus of asking asking first it's extremely important these days more and more that we respect people's sovereignty and you know there's there's different spectrums of this like sharing somebody's post obviously if it's on the public public setting and they've posted it and they're aware that it's on public domain and you can hit reshare then that's not offensive but if it's somebody somebody's private collection and their private artwork and you go in and download that private artwork or or even say for instance like a Dropbox or Sync link cloud storage like I have that pertains to a group setting and somebody takes that and goes and downloads everything, puts it on their computer and then re-uploads it on public domain. That's not, that's not respectful in my opinion. Uh, without asking first, without checking in with the person that, that made that available in the first place, you know, it's just kind of common respects and courtesy respectful ethics of, of being mindful of what somebody has provided for you to check in with them and say hey i was going to share this here and it doesn't take two seconds to do that to send a message uh, instead there's kind of this attitude of like oh it all needs to be free let's make it all free and um, and like I said, the distinction between the freedom teachings and what's available for sale on Arrayus, I totally understand. I, I get that. And I, I posted numerous things that are from workshops and things that are not available for sale right now. Uh, but the, what is for sale is kind of another story when you're going on public domain. And again, the distinction between private groups, which is what all... My groups that are sharing their race materials set to private, and the links that are shared within to cloud storage are also in private groups, so that should be respected not to share beyond that what is on those cloud drives, cloud storage. I think that's about it. Um, hope everyone's doing good. I, I'm reaching burnout, man. I've been working some long, long hours and I'm trying to know when I need to take breaks and not get physical symptoms and stuff. So if I'm not responsive to messages, that is why uh, I'm also working on completing the, the free techniques from Arrayus recordings. So we have the prayer of Arrayus, son of Arrayus, which is part of the new KRP. And we also have the vow, and what was the other one? The one desire, which is also a part of it, which is a song. And I'm going to upload that with the text so people can do the Anahazi with it also. And of course, the Son of Arrayus was a song I did like right when I was reciting those those plasma tones, the Aryan Kayachi, Aryan Rayaki. I just heard drum beats and it, just like really strong drums, and then eventually the guitar and there's actually two versions that i sing on with with two different ksers that i'm going to upload so that's the projects i'll be working on on my day off my night off um coming up fairly shortly hopefully <laughs>
So hope everyone's doing good and not much else as far as updates for the groups or anything right now. I'm just kind of letting it ride and letting all the changes kind of settle in and continuing the screening process. And, um, hasn't been too much activity since we've narrowed down the, the group sizes of the, the freedom teaching study groups and the plasma groups. So it's been pretty mellow, pretty chill. And we're still doing the Zoom calls. We're going to be doing the Zoom call next Sunday. We're doing every other Sunday. And I post the links in all the groups, all the major groups. So everybody has access to that also. And I want to thank Scott and Sheree again for those, those calls. They seem to be growing. Like we had over 15 people last time. <laughs> this is really cool. Kind of doubled from the time before that. So, All right. So everybody take care. And uh, oh, yeah, another quick update KS Reality Talks. There is one, two, three, three, I believe at least three new talks that are in the works right now that are coming up shortly. It always happens like one person, it, it starts to build like conversation, and it's like, okay, we're gonna do a talk, and then it's like one or two other people around the same time within days almost hears it or something they don't even know each other and it's like okay we're gonna do another one okay now here's the actual cluster of reality talks that comes on <laughs> so never ceases to amaze me with that it's really interesting how that works so those will be coming up for too long um probably i'm thinking early it's already spring so you know, like end of April, mid-April or something, coming up fairly shortly. So we'll catch up with all that soon and catch up, catch up with everybody on the Reality Talks soon and see you guys there. All right, take care.